friends welcome back to my kitchen my name is Becky if you're new and this is Acre Homestead right now we are going to start baking a cake it is Thursday right now and on Saturday my brother-in-law is graduating from law school so we are having a big barbecue for him and my sister-in-law asked me if I would make a cake and I said of course so we are going to make a white or yellow cake with chocolate frosting and that party is on Saturday so today is Thursday so I'm gonna bake these cakes up I'll show you how to wrap cakes and we'll pop them in the freezer and then we're gonna frost it on Saturday. And we're also gonna be making a rhubarb crisp for my sister's barbecue. It's supposed to be really beautiful on Sunday. And so she just said, hey, you wanna come over for a barbecue? And she asked me to make a rhubarb pie because my rhubarb is going crazy out in the garden. Not a rhubarb pie, a rhubarb crisp. So we're gonna do that, but we're not gonna do that till Saturday morning. So right now though, let's get this cake going. I do not have those fancy parchment paper sheets like my mom does. So I do it the old fashioned way. We're gonna trace around a piece of parchment paper and we're gonna cut that out. But we're also gonna leave a tail here and that will help us be able to lift the cake out of the pan. Now I'm not the best cake decorator or cake maker, but I do watch my mom make cakes a lot. She's the cake decorator in our family. So I'm gonna take some of her tricks. So she says spray the bottom of the pan first and then add your piece of parchment paper so that parchment paper sticks really well. And she says always push down that parchment paper around the outside edge so that when you pour your batter in, you're not gonna have an air bubble and the batter's gonna get up underneath that parchment paper. Then we're gonna spray this. The last thing you want is to go to the effort of making a homemade scratch made cake and then having it stick to the bottom of the pan. This is not my favorite thing to do. I love making things and doing things for friends and family. That is my favorite thing to do. But being tedious like this really stretches me. And I think it's a good practice to do this gonna get our parchment in here Cut this one a little bit so this is my husband's favorite type of cake a yellow cake with chocolate frosting and it must be my brother-in-law's favorite type of cake too because that's what we're making today this is gonna be fun today I'm excited about this it's kind of fun to stretch myself and we're gonna decorate it we haven't bought the decorations for this yet I think we're gonna go together and we're gonna go shopping because it's gonna be fun to decorate a graduation cake. Graduating law school is a pretty big deal. And I wanna honor that by making him a beautiful cake. So in the stand mixer, we're gonna add a half a cup of butter. I'll link this recipe. This is one I just found online that had really good reviews. And it's kind of cool because it uses both butter and oil. So I think it's gonna to add to a really moist texture. So the recipe calls for vegetable oil, but I don't like to use vegetable oil. And in the notes it said you could use any neutral oil. So this is avocado oil. And now we're gonna add one and a half cups of granulated sugar. This is a quarter cup, so we'll put two of those in there. And then we're gonna cream this together until it's nice and light and fluffy. It's beautifully fluffy now. I'm gonna mix in one tablespoon of vanilla. This is my kind of recipe because it uses a lot of vanilla. This is homemade vanilla. I have a whole video on this, but I like to use spiced rum to make vanilla because it adds really good flavor. Now here, we're gonna mix together the dry ingredients, which is three cups of all-purpose flour. One tablespoon of baking powder. Let me double check that it's not baking soda. Yes, baking powder. Half teaspoon of salt. And then we're gonna whisk that together just using a whisk. I'm gonna measure out one and a quarter cup of buttermilk. The recipe said to use full fat buttermilk, but they didn't have that at the store. So I just bought what I could. Okay. 
And just like that, we have all the components to make a homemade cake. It says to add the dry and wet ingredients alternatively. Alternately. So we're gonna start with the flour and then we'll end with the flour. Now, going back to the buttermilk, you can make homemade buttermilk by substituting one tablespoon for every cup of milk with one tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar because that's what buttermilk is. It's an acidic thing that's gonna help with the rise of your cake. And because I couldn't find full fat buttermilk, I didn't know if it would be better to make homemade buttermilk with whole milk or to use real buttermilk that's reduced fat. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Because I don't know. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. This smells so good. So we're gonna add a little bit more of the flour. This really is super easy to make homemade cake, especially if you were to put this in a bunt pan or in a sheet pan and not worry about the layers because this is a special event. I figured I'm gonna go ahead, go the little extra step and do the layers. But if this was a family dinner or something and it wasn't a celebration and they asked me to make a homemade cake, I'd probably do a sheet cake because it would be just a little bit easier with the frosting. It does say, to scrape down the sides at least once, so we're gonna do that before we add the rest of our flour. And that was it. You can see how thick this batter is. It kind of holds up on itself. I have the oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna evenly distribute this cake between our two pans, our cake batter. I think these cakes are done. It's slightly golden brown. It's pulling away from the sides of the pan and there's no give to it when I feel it. So we're gonna take both these cakes out. I'm gonna let those cakes cool completely. No, no, <laughs> take that back. I'm gonna let those cakes cool for 10 minutes. I'm gonna set a timer and then we'll take them out of the pan and we'll put them on a cooling rack to then cool completely. <laughs> Perfect! And that is why we did that. Beautiful. Our cakes have cooled completely. So what I'm gonna do is wrap them up. In two layers of saran wrap. And these are gonna go in the, I almost said oven. These are gonna go in the freezer until we're ready for them. And you can frost I need to double check with my mom, but I'm pretty sure you can frost cakes when they're frozen. If you can't, depending on what my mom says when I talk to her, I will either get them out Friday night and put them in the refrigerator to thaw, or I will get them out Saturday morning when we make the frosting and frost them. Saturday morning, we're also going to go ahead and make the rhubarb crisp. And I really want to make a cheese souffle for dessert, or for breakfast for Josh and I. So if I feel ambitious on Saturday morning, before we have the graduation we're gonna go to, then we're gonna try making and putting together these three recipes. Good morning, friends. It is Saturday morning early, and we have a couple things on the schedule today that we need to get done. The first thing I wanted to do, because it was so beautiful outside, is I wanted to get out and I wanted to harvest the rhubarb. Rhubarb is, I think, in the celery family. I'm gonna have to look that up. Let me look that up right now. Well, I'm glad I looked that up because I would have been spreading false information. The rhubarb is actually in the buckwheat family and celery is in the parsnip family. So even though they kind of look alike, they are not related at all. 
and the flavor of rhubarb is a really unique flavor it's kind of it's really tart and so it goes really well in desserts because you get this tart sweet flavor and it grows it's a perennial so it grows every year I don't have to plant it and if you've never tried it I'd highly recommend it you could certainly probably find it in your grocery store or a farmers market in your area these leaves of the rhubarb plant are huge so what I like to do is use them as mulch and just to help prevent weed pressure and give back to the soil so now that we have all of our rhubarb we're going to go ahead and bring that inside and we are going to decorate our cake and prep to make a rhubarb crisp it's going to be a beautiful day out there it's saturday and it's supposed to be in the 70s that is the warmest day of the year so far now that we're back inside we need to get going on the frosting this is the frosting that came with the cake recipe which I am going to link down in the description box if you want this recipe. I am going to one and a half this recipe. My mom always says she doubles her frosting whenever she makes a layered cake. So I don't think I need to double it, but I'm going to one and a half it. Hopefully I don't regret that. So I have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 ounces of chocolate in here. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips and I'm going to melt them. And then over here, we have the rest of the ingredients. I'm going to start creaming together or creaming in this bowl while the chocolate melts. One and a half cups of butter. Just so that it can get soft. I did have this butter left out overnight. We have this butter really light and fluffy. This is grass fed butter, so it's very, very yellow and now it's a little bit lighter yellow so we're going to add the next ingredients i have my chocolate melted here it's a little bit on the warm side so i'm going to add everything else and then the chocolate because i don't want this chocolate to melt our butter i did decide to go ahead and double it because i figured you know what i would rather have too much frosting than not enough i don't like frosting personally but my dad does and i'm hanging out on sunday tomorrow we're doing a big barbecue at my sister's house. And so if I have leftover frosting, I will go ahead and bring it over there. So I just added a tablespoon of vanilla, which because I'm doubling it, I need to add a little bit more, and a splash or two of cream. Now I don't have heavy whipping cream, which is what the recipe calls for, but I have half and half. So I just added half and half. If you are from overseas, half and half, because I think it's a US thing, is half cream half milk and it's what people usually put in their coffee and so now we need to add four cups of powdered sugar okay four cups and we're going to blend that together The frosting tastes really good, but it's not quite as dark as I want. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cocoa powder. You all know me, I can't follow a recipe to save my life. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with a half a cup, excuse me, a quarter cup. And then I might need to add a little bit more cream because this is gonna dry the frosting out a little bit, but we'll just see how it goes. Woo. I think this is perfect. It tastes really good, very, very chocolatey not too sweet i did not add any more cream because this seems pretty spreadable to me and i don't want it to be too runny so let's go frost our cake so i talked to my mom about frozen cakes and whether you can frost cakes if they're frozen and she said you absolutely can frost cakes when they're frozen but what happens is because they're so cold it can harden your frosting and make it a little bit harder to frost your cake so what I did Friday night, which was yesterday, was put these cakes in the refrigerator to thaw. And then this morning I put them on the counter while I showered so that they would come up to room temperature. So I'm gonna put a little bit of frosting on the base of our cake pan as glue to keep this cake from sliding all over the place. I think what I'm gonna do is put it seam or top side down Oh, I want to use this one as the bottom, actually, because when I put this cake in the freezer, it was sitting up against my blueberries, and so there's a little bit of a divot there, so we're going to hide that with frosting. I 
I also don't want to get my cake pan all frostedini. I want it to look nice. So I'm going to cut a couple strips of parchment paper. And we're going to tuck this parchment paper up underneath our cake so that after we're done frosting it, we can just take the parchment paper out and our cake pan will be nice and clean. I don't have a turntable like my mom does, so we're just going to do it the old fashioned way. Turn it by hand. Oop. Stay there, parchment. I'm definitely glad I doubled this frosting recipe. I can already tell that we're going to probably use all of it. Now I'm going to put this cake top side down and hopefully that will make a nice level cake. I have not decorated a layer cake in years years and it's kind of fun this offset spatula makes a big difference i just got this at goodwill not that long ago and let me tell you you need an offset spatula okay definitely definitely double your frosting because i have used all but that much frosting there's not very much left in there now i have to figure out how i want to finish this cake and what i was thinking was doing like it kind of messy looking so one way to do that you know i think i'm gonna put a little bit more frosting on the outside i don't think i have enough let's see maybe i have enough to no i don't think i have enough to pipe i'm arguing in my head on how i should do this because i don't know what i'm doing so what i'm going to do is try to get an even layer of this frosting around the side. It's very airy, so it's kind of hard to, maybe I whipped it too much, I don't know. I'm gonna take a spoon, just the back of a spoon, and I'm going to kind of put little swirls. So it's gonna be kind of like intentionally messy because there's no way this, this frosting is very fluffy. If I tried to smooth this out really nice, I'm not gonna have that happen. I think I'm having too much fun doing this. I might become a cake decorator, I don't know. I made two of my friends wedding cakes, just the cake they, or the dessert they cut. And I kind of did it this style. And then we put a ton of really beautiful flowers on the top. One of them was a white pound cake. The other one was a carrot cake. That was years ago though. I think 2011. That's cute. I like it. Now what we're going to do is pull out this parchment paper. You can see how it's leaving this really nice and clean edge. And my cake is not completely centered. You can see there's a lot more space over here than over here. So I'm gonna attempt, let's see if we can do this. There we go. Ah! I just gouged it. We're gonna fix it. Yeah, we're gonna fix it. Okay. All right, it's centered now. Now we gotta clean up this. This was exactly what I didn't want, but I think we can clean it up. Oh yeah, that's cleaning up, no problem. All right, beautiful. I love it, it's absolutely adorable. Now I did not have a chance yesterday to go buy any cake topper or anything, so we don't have to leave the house for an hour and I'm already showered and have my makeup on. All I have to do is change. What I'll probably do is go change, run to the store and see if we can find something cute to decorate it. Cause I think it's cute. I think what we'll do, I don't have time to make the rhubarb crisp today, which is fine. Cause the rhubarb crisp is for tomorrow and we don't have to leave and be to that party until one o'clock. So, so I ran to the store and I was very unpleased displeased with the decoration, but I found these cute little festive, I don't know what these are called, but I thought they would be really pretty on the top. So we're gonna decorate the top of this cake with these. My biggest question is how am I gonna get, the, oh, that works, them to stick. But if I just take and I push it in a little bit, that works perfectly. It's so cute, perfect. 
Good morning, friends. It is Sunday morning, and we got to get ready for this barbecue at my sister's house. Last night, we had the graduation. It was so nice. It was outside, and it couldn't have been a better day. We had a beautiful barbecue, and the cake was delicious. I'm going to link that recipe down below. It's not my recipe, but let me tell you, that is the best yellow cake I have ever made. It was fantastic. But we need to now make this rhubarb crisp. I washed all the rhubarb yesterday. We've got a ton of dirty dishes. The kitchen is a mess. My kitchen aid is a disaster. My stove is messy. And, and if you watched earlier this uh, week, we made three days ago some pasta. This is homemade pasta. I have three tables of it. I put this tablecloth up here like this just so that my dogs couldn't get to it. I've had two fans on it for two days. It's completely dry. So we need to get this put away so that we can enjoy this pasta all year long. If you wanna watch me make this, I have a video on it. I also have the recipe I can link down below, but this is homemade pasta with homemade eggs and you just dry it and you have pasta for whenever you want it. So I wanna get this taken care of. I also wanna make Josh, because it's Sunday, a baked oatmeal so that he can have some breakfast for the week. We're gonna make a blueberry applesauce baked oatmeal and he's gonna really enjoy it, I think. So let's go ahead and get the ovens preheated. I'm gonna preheat both of them. I have one oven, but it has two separate ovens in it because I'm gonna bake them separately. I wanna get this kitchen cleaned up so that we can go relax, enjoy the beautiful weather. It's supposed to be in the 70s today. And then we can come home to a clean house. I won't have to worry about dinner and we can just relax and have a very nice relaxing Sunday evening in a clean house. So like I mentioned, we got this rhubarb washed up and cleaned up last night. This is way more rhubarb than we need for today's recipe. Every time I go out and harvest rhubarb for a recipe, I've been harvesting more than I need for the recipe so I can get it put up in the freezer. Instead of going out there and just harvesting a ton and having to deal with it all at one time, I've kind of been taking the let's slowly do this approach. And if you guys have any rhubarb recipes, I greatly appreciate that down in the description box. I have a fantastic rhubarb barbecue sauce recipe. I can link that video down there as well. But I have so much of it in my pantry, I don't need to make any of it this year. And I have enough rhubarb jam in my pantry as well. So other than just freezing rhubarb for desserts, can you guys give me any suggestions of other ways to preserve rhubarb? I'd greatly appreciate it. One suggestion was an upside down rhubarb cake. And I have to tell you that sounds so good. So we are gonna make that together at some point, but I need to do something really easy. And my sister requested a rhubarb crisp today. So that's perfect because I can whip that up really quickly. I want to get the things in the oven so that we can clean the kitchen while everything is baking. I'm trying to be as efficient today as possible. We have our pan of rhubarb. So the rest of the rhubarb I'm gonna chop is gonna go in a freezer bag right in the freezer. Now it's time to finish the filling for the rhubarb crisp. I'm putting about a quarter cup to maybe a third of a cup of flour and a cup of sugar. So this is a lot of rhubarb and rhubarb is pretty tart so it needs that to kind of balance the flavor. I'm gonna toss this together. I'm doing this right in the dish. We're gonna bake it in so that it's one less dish to clean. And now we are gonna make the crisp topping. And to make crisp toppings, it's super easy. It's always equal parts oats, flour, butter, and sugar. And I'm gonna use brown sugar in this. And I started out using a quarter, excuse me, I started out using a third of a cup of everything, and that wasn't quite enough. And so I did end up by the end adding a quarter cup more of everything. So I did one cup flour, one cup oats, one cup butter, and one cup brown sugar. I also added a little bit of salt to help balance the sweetness of this. And then I find it's best just to use my hands, get in there, and make it until it makes a nice clumpy crisp. So now that we have a really beautiful crumble, we're gonna go ahead and top our crisp with it. Crisps are one of the easiest desserts to throw together because you can make them with apples, with berries, 
and the ratio of the topping is always exactly the same. You might be able to hear the microwave because Josh is microwaving some breakfast. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you live here too. It's a working kitchen. In the oven she goes, probably for about 45 minutes to an hour. Now we basically have everything out to make Josh's baked oatmeal, so I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar, some oats, eggs. I make this different every time, just depending on what ingredients I have and what's in my pantry. Right now I'm gonna to try to use up the blueberries because blueberry season is gonna be here soon. I like to make this right in the dish we're gonna bake it in because then that's one less dish I have to clean. That's some applesauce, milk. You can use almond milk, dairy milk, whatever kind of milk you want. Mix it together. My butter is a little bit frozen, which is fine, and I don't feel like microwaving it. So I'm just gonna cut it into cubes. I do have a recipe for this, but I generally just kind of go by eyeball. I make it so much that I don't really follow a recipe. So I'm just gonna dice this up and then we'll mix it into the baked oatmeal kind of diced up like this. And then I have our homegrown blueberries that we need to start making an effort to use. Then we'll just mix it all together so that it's evenly distributed. Oh, we need one of the most important ingredients, vanilla. This batch is almost out. I have another batch that's brewing that we need to get in this bottle. That's how easy it is to make baked oatmeal. When I take this out of the oven, I divide it into individual containers and Josh takes one to work every day. So the cool thing about baked oatmeal is there's so many different flavors you can make. I do banana baked oatmeal, peach baked oatmeal. That's what we did, peach cinnamon last week. I do apple, rhubarb. I could have done rhubarb today because we chopped it up, but I really want to start using these blueberries. I've done zucchini. So you can kind of make it whatever you want and you can change up the flavor. This is Josh's favorite breakfast. It has a lot of protein from the eggs. There's some fat from the butter and complex carbs from the oats. So it keeps them full really long. And so he likes it, so I make it and it's easy. And he gets a homemade breakfast. It's super frugal because the fruits generally are always homegrown fruits or fruits that I preserved. Well, obviously I don't grow bananas, so I do buy bananas, but the applesauce is all homegrown. The blueberries, peaches I preserve up in the summer. So now the kitchen is even a little bit more messy than it was when we started. So let's get this place cleaned up. Here is an overview of what we are starting with and we are gonna give ourselves about a half an hour and see what we can get done. Typically, the first thing I do when I get into the kitchen is I really like to unload the dishwasher. I did not do that today. So the first thing I'm going to do before we start cleaning anything is get it unloaded because we did use some dishes and I want to be able to get those dirty dishes into the dishwasher. So we get that unloaded, but then I notice that there is frosting on my KitchenAid. There is flour or I think it might be powdered sugar on my stove. So I end up grabbing the cleaner and I clean up my KitchenAid and the stove. I go ahead and I put that away and then we finish unloading the dishwasher and there we go I love having an unloaded dishwasher see <laughs> why I like to have unloaded dishwasher because then I can put those dirty dishes right into the dishwasher and if I'm working in the kitchen I really prefer the dishwasher to be unloaded so that I can load as I go and I'm not having to stack my sink full of dishes and that is always my goal does it always happen absolutely not now I want to get my kitchen sink clean and not everything fit in the dishwasher so I kind of scrub the bits out of the sink and then we're going to wash these two dishes by hand. And this right now is where I realized while I'm washing this souffle dish that we were going to make a cheese souffle together and I completely forgot about that because there was some leftover chocolate souffle in that dish which is okay. We will still at some point attempt to make a souffle dish together, a cheese one. We made a, if you watch the pasta video, we made a chocolate souffle together. And so just, it didn't happen today, but it will happen at some point. These are my favorite containers to store my, my flowers and oats and sugar in. So I just put the lids on those and we're going to get those in the pantry. But first, since I was standing here, I thought I would get 
all of these refrigerator items back in the refrigerator so that I'm not moving around the kitchen as much. I do try to be as efficient as possible. And now we're gonna put the dry goods away. I can link those containers if you want. I just bought them for my mom and my mom loves them. The nice thing about those containers is you can fit a one cup or a two cup measure in them and you don't have to worry about a small opening in order to fit your containers in. So now I did need to wash this cutting board that we used up. This is a cutting board I got for Christmas one year from my father-in-law and it is stunning. I love this cutting board so much, but it definitely can't go in the dishwasher. One, it's too big and two, it would be bad for the wood. So we just wash it in the sink and then I rinse out the sink again. And now it's time to get these counters clean because oh my goodness, I love my countertops, but they hide everything. And it's nice for just when you're looking, but then it's not nice if you set something down and the counter's dirty because you didn't see it. So now we get the stove cleaned and I just take a time to scrub everything so that we can go into this week with a clean kitchen. It can be stressful to me sometimes if I go into the week with a messy kitchen. Time to take care of this pasta. I just store it in Ziploc bags. I reuse the Ziploc bags when I make homemade pasta. And you know it's dry because it's dry. It's very, very dry. So we're just gonna put this in Ziploc bags and store it for later use. I purposely cut the pasta in the length of a Ziploc bag so that I can store it in that. You just wanna work very gently with it because you don't wanna break them all. I do like to keep as much length as possible. I got a few questions when we made this pasta together in the video in the comment section asking how I cooked this pasta. This pasta is completely raw. I made the dough, I rolled the dough out, I cut it, I laid it on these tables with two fans on them for three days and they just completely dried and that's how they're shelf stable. Even though there's eggs in this, because they are dry, they are completely shelf stable. The biggest thing is making sure that you do not put them in your Ziploc bags until they are completely dried. The baked oatmeal is done. And it looks so good. So it is still soft, but it's gonna be firm all the way through. I try not to over bake the baked oatmeal because Josh will be heating it up when he goes to eat it. So if I kind of slightly undercook it, I mean, it's fully cooked through, but if I make sure it's not like firm, firm, then I know when he goes to reheat it, it's not gonna dry out. The crisp has another 15 minutes or so, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish packaging up that pasta. We got 10 bags of the long pasta, which we'll make into pasta dishes, and then I got one bag of kind of the ends for the broken pieces or the small pieces, and I'm gonna use this in chicken noodle soup probably. I mean, I can use this in chicken noodle soup, but I didn't want to throw these away and waste them, but I want to leave these whole in case we want to make a pasta dish out of it. And then if I want to make chicken noodle soup, I can break it up. This pasta just sat on this table and completely dried. To preserve it, that's all I did. I put it in a Ziploc bag, I put it in my pantry, and I've had pasta last up to a year in my pantry, no problem, as long as, this is really, really important, that pasta is completely dry. It must be bone, bone dry, or it'll mold or spoil because there's moisture in it. But because it's completely dry, it's been drying for three days, it's perfectly fine. And that is at least 10 meals with leftovers. Because one of these is, I made 12 batches and I got 10 of these full bags. So that, I mean, it's probably about a pound of pasta. And you know me, I like to cook big batches so that I don't have to cook every day. We eat at home 99% of the time, but I don't want to cook every day. And so one way to do that is by making a big dinner and being able to eat leftovers. I think our rhubarb crisp is done. So we're gonna get that out of the oven. Oh yeah, beautiful. You know it's done because it's bubbling. The rhubarb is gonna be soft. Our crisp topping is golden brown. And we're gonna let this cool completely before we dig into that. 
I wanted to get our crisp done early in the morning even though our barbecue doesn't even start until 3 because you don't want to serve this until it's cooled because it will just ooze out everywhere. My mom and dad are going to bring some vanilla ice cream because we, Josh and I, have to actually leave here in about a half an hour to go do something pretty fun and exciting which eventually you guys will know what that is. But I need to go change and so we can get ready to go. I'm going to package this up real quick. We got the kitchen clean. It sure does look a whole lot better. Now I did not sweep and mop the floors. We'll get to that probably tomorrow. And I didn't take down these tables. We'll probably do that tomorrow. But the kitchen feels nice and put back together, which is what I was going for. I did not want to come home from this barbecue today and have to deal with looking at a messy kitchen. So that's just stressful and nobody wants that. These are the containers that I package up Josh's breakfast, whether it's quiche that I make, some egg dish, or baked oatmeal. We've had these for seven years. I can link them down below. They're called Snap, Snap Lock or Snapware or something. I love them. You wanna see the texture of how that comes out? Even with that many eggs, it's still really soft as long as you don't over bake it you don't have to put as many eggs in it as I do but Josh likes the protein and we have 11 chickens so we get a lot of eggs so it's really good way to use up eggs It feels really awesome to have the kitchen clean, have our dessert made, have breakfast. I packaged up a couple of lunches for Josh. We made some jambalaya two days ago and I have that packaged up for him so he can take that to lunch tomorrow. We've got the pasta taken care of. Now I'm gonna go get ready. I'm gonna go enjoy the afternoon. I'm gonna come home to a clean kitchen and we're gonna start the week off with just being able to relax and not have to think about a messy kitchen. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will link the recipes down in the description box if you're interested. I will leave the recipes down in the description box if you're interested in them. If you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up. If you're new consider subscribing or you can go watch some of my other videos. I'll post those right here so you can go enjoy those between now and my next upload. And thanks for hanging out with me. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.